There's nothing I love doing more than making beautiful papers for my journals and today uh, that's exactly what we are going to be doing. Uh, hello everyone, I'm Marianne, the Artsy Crafter. Welcome to my channel. So today I want to show you a, a unique way of making uh, um, some paper for your journals. Um, I've done this before but not uh, in such a grand scale and here we go. This is uh, my page in my journal that I made. This is the first half of it here and the other half is on this side here. So that's what I made. So I thought uh, I'd show you how I did that today and perhaps you might want to uh, make a page like this for your own journals. It's very easy to do. So that's what we I'm going to show you how to do that today. And it, first of all, uh, I made this page from, would you believe, tea bags. So I think you can see the sewing where I sewed them together. And how I started was, first of all, I took two tea bags. And I'll show you. Here, I took two tea bags and I sewed them together. Um, you can glue them. I don't know. They, no, I didn't even glue them together. Um, but if you don't want to sew, you can definitely glue these panels together. So I started off with two. And, and then, then I sewed two lots here to another two lots. So that got four pages. So I did that. Right. And then once you've got four panels, you make another four panels and then you sew them together to give you a page like this. And I left all the nice little strings on here because I think that gives uh, a feathery effect, uh, adds to the effect of the page. And of course this folds in half and I glued it, I didn't glue it, <laughs> sorry. I sewed it into my journal. So I'll put this journal aside. Uh, here I used um, some greens and browns and yellows and black. Uh, today I thought I would try uh, to do some blues just for something a bit different so I'll leave that aside and we'll work on this and I like to uh, because the paint's going to go straight through the tea bag because it's uh, porous I like to put this on a base mat here so that you can lift it up um, and work around on it without it sticking to the um, mat so I've got my watercolor paints here ready to go looks a bit messy uh, i've got a spray bottle of water to spray on there to activate the colors like that so that's what we're going to start with i also have some uh, for now i've got a little dish of gold paint that i add a little bit of water to so i'll set that aside and also i have some white paint to do some splattering of color this is just acrylic paint actually to start with, I'm going to spray the background, um, just a bit of water so that the colour will uh, blend onto the page. That's nice and wet. First of all, I'm going to add some yellow um, into places and there's a bit of green I must have picked up on there. And so I want to put the yellow on first and then I'll add green next to it because um, the green and yellow can blend together and uh, so then I'll have a bit of green and I'll keep dip dipping my brush into the water so I get a nice watery effect I don't want a solid color so every time I go and pick up some paint I will dip my brush into water first and then add it on here and then blend it into the yellow so that's, if I did blue on here, the blue and the yellow would make green. So I don't want that to happen. I want some yellow on there at this stage. And then now I've dipped my water, my brush into the water and I'm going to pick up some blue color to add. And I'm going to work fairly quickly and I've got different blues here. So I'm going to do a blend of blues. And it doesn't really matter 
um, which blues you use. I do want some dark areas because the, um, the inks that we're going to use will look better on a darker background. So that's why I'm adding some darker colors as well. And so it's just a matter of blending those in. And of course, I've got some brown in the background here because uh, tea bags, um, you know, if you, if you use used tea bags, then they get the brown stain from the tea. And a little bit more of the green. So it's just a matter of playing around with the colors until you get something that you like. And just having fun with these colors and get some pretty blues in there. So as you can imagine, this is going to get very wet, but that's okay. And get some So I'm going to go over that yellow with the green. So I don't want it so bright. So the yellow I'm using is the yellow ochre. And I need some darker colour in here somewhere. So I'll just keep going over it till I get darker shades in different areas. And you can't really make a mistake with this. <laughs> it's just a matter of personal preference. I think that's looking quite pretty and then I'm going to dry this off and then I'll come back and I'll do a second coat because the edges I want dark so I might add a little the dark blue and a little bit of black on here just to um, darken those edges so I'll dry that off now and uh, I'll come back Okay, the paper is not fully dry. I don't want it to be fully dry because I want to add um, some more color a little bit. Oops, I've got something on my paintbrush. Um, a little darker, so wet my paintbrush and go around the edges. And I want to add some of that dark blue in there and blend it in. I'll do that all the way around the edge, edges, blend it in a bit. You want to do this when it's um, halfway dry, I guess. And I've picked up a bit of purple there, but that doesn't matter. And you can add some more of that color in areas where you want to darken it up a bit. Add some more green and then some blue over the top of that. I'm just adding different green, I'm um, sorry, different blues. Um, I'm not really being very selective in the colors that I'm, the, the types of blue shades of blue that I'm using. But I want this to be um, more aqua and blues rather than the green. But these areas here, just blend them in a little bit more so it's less the yellow. I've got a bit more of that. I do want some lighter areas, that's why I've done these two areas here. And then I still want to grunge up the border, the corners, um, the edges a bit more. So I've, I've got some brown and some black in here. Um, just blend them in. There we 
go. Um, this also uh, is like uh, inking your edges because uh, you know you can imagine that with this <laughs> tea bags that uh, it'd be very hard to apply ink to it afterwards. So that's why I'm doing this now. And uh, of course this will, uh, when it's dry, it will dry lighter. So trying to get some blues, a bit more blues in here. It's a nice blue. Some darker blue. So uh, it's hard to tell how this is going to turn out until it's dry. But I think I'm happy with that. I just want a bit more of really dark blue in patches here. I'll do that. I won't add any more color at this stage. I'll just um, blend in what I've got on the brush just to add little a few areas that are darker okay okay I think I'm happy with that color as I said it's hard to tell you don't can't really tell until it's um, dry exactly how it's going to turn out I'm just going to get rid of some of this excess paint or water at the back there and then I'll go dry this off and we'll come back and see how it looks. Okay, it's fully dry and you can see that it's a lot lighter and you can see where the uh, the tea, I was going to say coffee, the tea um, has come through here and also where there's creases in the tea bags and the edges did darken. I could darken them up a bit more if I wanted to, but I think I'll leave it as it is. I'm quite happy with that and uh, I'll just clean off my desk and then we'll get on to the stamping. Okay, it's time to do some stamping and I've got a script stamp here and it's too long for my, <laughs> for my, I must get a bigger one of these but anyway, I'm going to do some stamping first and uh, I'm using some stays on jet in jet black. Uh, this is a permanent ink and I think it because this is fairly dark it tends to stand out a little bit more I think it does anyway we'll soon find out so I'm just going to stamp bits of it and I never know which way is up um, I should put a little mark on here anyway stamp some there and you leave it a few seconds for that ink to transfer to the paper and I quite like that and on this side it's running out and I got some on my mat never mind Okay, and perhaps a little here. Oops, <laughs> stuck. Okay. So before I go any further, I want to um, do the background, finish doing the background first. But I did do the branches before I did the damping, so we'll do that next. I'll have to get my paints out next there's no great technique it's just drawing some lines onto the paper tea bags just to um, emulate some branches so i start off by i usually 
start from off the page and on and just do some wiggly lines and they get thinner as they peter out if you can do that so this is how I do it sometimes it's easier to do the thinner lines going backwards that's what I find anyway and make sure I add some water and then I'll go this way And I'll turn it over and do it upside down. And then I then where the um, can you see this? Yes. Where these two lines intersect, I put my paintbrush down there and I thicken that line all the way down and then a little bit onto there um, just to give, and I haven't got any up here, but I'll show you. There's two more here, so I put the paintbrush there just to thicken up that line and I just dab it on to there and then I draw it down. Uh, and then at the end I make it even thicker right at the base uh, because um, branches usually get thicker as they go down so I, once again I'll turn this around these two where they intersect I'll just put my paintbrush down there and make it a little bit thicker and then I'll go up the stem a little bit and you don't have to be accurate and you can break up that line down here once again on there and then up the trunk a little up the branch I should say and then down and make it a little bit thicker it, uh, I like to make it a little bit jaggy jagged sorry and it will um, bleed sometimes but I like that effect then it gives you a very um, rustic branch So I'll let that dry for a minute and then we'll get on to the uh, stamping. The I'm using the uh, last one I used a butterfly, this time I'm going to use a dragonfly. What have I done with it? Here. And we're on the sticky side. Just move that up and then get this. Hopefully it will transfer better with this ink in my other ink and and I like to do it where it's lighter so it will stand up stand out a little bit more and hold it down for a couple seconds or more and there we go it's very faint but I don't mind uh, as I said, when that dries, you can go over it and make it stand out a bit more with some inks. You could paint it in if you really wanted to, but I like to leave it natural. And do another one up here. And then you can see it there. We'll do another one. And the fifth one, I'm going to get it in the center. So parts will hopefully 
show up on both sides of the page when I fold it over there we go so there's the dragonflies as I said they're very faint and so you can go over them with ink and um, paint them in perhaps you want to paint some gold over the top I'll leave them dry for now and then I'll look at them again later on but first of all we're going to sprinkle splatter I keep saying sprinkle splatter some gold over here and I'm using my um, fan brush I like to do it with fan brush so I dip some in and I get another brush here and this will go everywhere <laughs> I like big splatters and small splatters there we go I'll wash my brush out put that aside and then I'll get my white paint oops and Add some water to it. Do it in the lid here. Okay, let's see if we can get some white splatters now. Don't know if you can see it, but it looks very pretty. Tap harder and you'll get bigger splatters. I think I've got enough. <laughs> Quite enough now. It looks like I'm um, looking up at the sky at a galaxy of stars. Okay, I'll pick it up and see if you can see the page. There we go. So that's basically it. And um, the text in Sharp as well, there we go. It's very hard to show on the camera. But, uh, see all the text so that's our page so that's that one and I'll show you as long as I don't dirty the background I'll just clean this all off and then I'll come back and uh, we can compare to the original okay I think you can see there if I move this out this way there's a comparison the um, the butterflies did come out a little bit more than the dragonfly, but I might um, to fix that. I can go ahead, move my journal aside. <laughs> now they're getting dirty. I can go ahead. I can either use a paintbrush or I can use a ink pen, which I might use first. And you can go back and put that on the end there. And bring me in a bit so you can see here an angle go ahead and use your ink pen and I think this one's dried out so I'll get another one excuse me uh, this is an outline 06 we'll see how thick this is this is um, I better try it this is a new one I haven't tried before Oh, that's not too bad it's not too thick uh, you can go back and color these in and draw in some more of the detail body like that so that your butterfly or your dragonfly stands out a bit more so you can go ahead and redraw in those lines So that stands out a lot more. Uh, as I said, you can go back and use um, what have I got? A thin paintbrush here, and we will move that ink around so you can do it that way. You could blur those lines up to make it a little bit more rugged.
using the watercolors, uh, sorry, the water, it will bleed that those lines. So this is one way you can change it. Uh, I wouldn't do it on the body, I just do it on the wings. And it gives you that effect where you then, when this is dry, then you can go over with the ink on the outline. This is what happened with this butterfly. It was a lot smaller and I bled it out. Um, and then I drew it in with the ink over the top once that uh, is dried. The other thing you can do is if you don't like um, the colors to the inks too dark, you can blot over it with a tissue. Once that's dry, you can go around with an ink pen and draw, um, redraw those lines. The other thing you can do is, and I don't, I hope I don't destroy this now, <laughs> um, doing this, but uh, you can do, go ahead and touch it up with some gold. So there you go. As I said, uh, it doesn't look much now, but when you go ahead, go over it with the ink pen and redraw it, those lines um, it'll look very pretty so that's another way that you can make uh, if it doesn't stand out too much you want it to stand out a little bit more and make it a bit more uh, of an individual look or a painterly look that's the way you could do it there's the butterfly with the now that i've redrawn the um all the lines in that that's how it turns out. So there's our page all ready to go to put into the journal. And this is what it looks like on a lighter background so you can see. So you can imagine that uh, folded over into when you sew it into your journal. Look quite pretty. Uh, I hope you got some inspiration out of that today. And uh, if you liked what you saw, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. So there's the original and there's the new one. There we go. So I wish everybody a happy crafty day and we'll see you in the next video. Bye everyone.